Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Today is my pleasure to introduce you my mentor, Dr. Carlos Nunn, who's going to talk about endometrial microbiota. Carlos, and you want? Thank you, Nasser. Good morning to all of you. Um, I'm going to, to present our results about the endometrial microbiome. And, uh, well, as you know, we are living in a microbial world. Microbes, they are surrounding us, but also they are living on us and making that uh, we produce our functions. We are, we are coming from a pandemic, but uh, don't be, um, I mean, don't misunderstood because microbes, they may help also. And uh, these are the data that you must know. If you weigh about 70 kilograms, one kilogram of your body weight is because of the bugs that they are living on, mainly on the skin and on the guts, and they are helping us to produce our functions. And uh, uh, the, the reason why it has been not detected until now is because between 20 and 60 percent of this bacteria cannot be cultured. And until now, the uh, culture was the only way to uh, identify those microbes. But this has been now the technology, the, the fact that with next generation sequencing, we can detect them, that has been possible the, the recent advances. So having said so, uh, it has been an initiative from NIH, uh, which is called the Human Microbiome Project, detecting all the microbes in the human body. And about 10% of this microbiome is present in the genital tract. Mainly those were coming from the vagina, and we are aware of uh, the relevance of microbes in the vagina and the use of, of probiotics and the use of antibiotics for vaginosis. But the real question for us was, uh, is there an endometrial microbiota? Is there a possibility that uh, those microbes migrate to the uterus and uh, it will affect the reproductive function? So with that, we start uh, uh, about uh, six years ago, and this was the first paper demonstrating that uh, indeed it exists. So the microbiome in the uterus is very close to, 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 to this in the vagina, but in 20% of cases, we have a completely different one. We have uh, uh, endometritis with a normal vaginal microbiome or the other way around. And uh, the most important uh, um, pathogen there is, is lactobacillus. Uh, in this work was the first one on, uh, using HES, and we use in the same patient. We obtain samples from the vagina and from the endometrial fluid. And uh, we learned here in this pilot study that uh, uh, the difference to have a good microbiome, what we call a lactobacillus dominant microbiome and a non lactobacillus dominant microbiome, in otherwise normal patients can make a huge difference in terms of life birth, pregnancy rate, implantation rate, and you can see life birth goes from 60 to 6%. This was a pilot study, few patients, but it showed us uh, what could be the relevance on the endometrial microbiome on reproductive outcome. The blue, as you can see here, they are the good guys, lactobacillus, and the others, they are pathogens. So you can see just with a, with a first glimpse the difference between Life birth, cumulative uh, clinical miscarriage, and no pregnancy. So this was the very first thing. Then next year, a paper came from other groups uh, showing that indeed there is a microbiota continuum uh, throughout the reproductive tract. That is starting from the vagina, as you see, everything is lactobacillus, goes to the uterine cavity where lactobacillus is present, but also maybe others, and, and so the tube and peritoneum. So, there is a continuum, and this continuum is related also to pathologies. And with that, uh, we uh, were also, this is, this is very interesting because for the first time, we were able to see what is the microbiome in a normal human pregnancy. This was, as usually, always serendipity. This was a, a, a patient of mine that came from the Emirates. She had a very good ovarian research. We obtained blastocysts, we analyzed them. And at the first the transfer, she did not get pregnant. Then we did the ERA test, and also the microbiome at that time was experimental, so we cannot make any decisions on that. We transferred the embryo, the, the patient become pregnant, but she miscarried. After the miscarriage, of course, we have to treat it with antibiotics. So we were not aware what happens after that. And, and the, 
in the miscarriage, the microbiome of the miscarriage you have here. So as you see, there is a lot of pathogens here that, and, and lactobacillus was very low. The same patient, uh, she, just, uh, she just went back home and after uh, summer uh, vacation, September 1st, she came for me to do an endometrial microbiome again with endometrial fluid without knowing that at this moment the patient was pregnant again. And I realized this one week after that. So I obtained the endometrial microbiome of this patient when she was four weeks pregnant. And as you can see, lactobacillus was completely dominant. This is the, the microbiome that, uh, that the endometrium was, the, the embryo was seeing at this moment. Unfortunately, everything went to turn. We got the permission to publish this. And just let me just briefly show you, this is the, the, the video that you can find in American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which is uh, uh, highly downloaded. Just a uh, two minutes explanation of this. Is the volume? Can you hear the volume? No volume there? Where? The, you can download it in the American Journal. Sorry, but, uh, but the, 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 the point here is just to explain what, what I have told you and also show you the metagenomics of this microbiome showing that the existence is the uterine cavity. And uh, we try to, to show in the, the, the picture of uh, what is the normal microbiome mainly dominated by lactobacillus and in this patient and uh, all of these are the taxonomy assessed by metagenome sequencing and those genes that are affected and when we have an alter and dysbiotic microbiome those that uh, also will be affected but as you can see they're completely different from miscarriage to pregnancy so it demonstrates those targets that we can use in order to do that and this is again showing you those differences this normal microbiome was mainly directed with uh, uh, lactobacillus inners and this was the, the main thing about that and we continue finally to uh, really to demonstrate this issue and in order to do that this paper was just published uh, last January in the microbiome by which we finally demonstrate this now in a large setting uh, this is the pedigree of the study this is a collaborative study a prospective uh, a prospective multicenter study this is the pedigree of the study in nih.gov and the, the, these are the centers that participate of that. And the idea was the patient that was to have a transfer, we obtained the endometrial fluid and the endometrial biopsy. We analyzed the microbiome and then we relate this to the reproductive outcome. And this is the difference between the first pilot study that I show you from 2016 and this study now. So we now have uh, investigated uh, 200 uh, uh, 342 patients in 13 centers compared to previous. We obtained fluid and biopsy. Uh, we have now updated the NGS. We have started with viral sequencing. Now we are using IO16S, which allow us to, uh, to uh, investigate more hypervariable regions. These hypervariable regions of the 16 ribosomal RNA give us the identity card of the pathogen. So we can really differentiate them. Now we are using seven seven hypervariable regions. We added more positive and uh, we also identified low biomass because the uterus is a low biomass place and uh, we, we should know whether the results are because there is a low biomass or because of this is a dysbiotic uh, microbiome. And, and also we changed the way of understand the taxa uh, and we, we do that with compositional data. So uh, just in a nutshell, and the, the paper is published, the point here is this with this huge population now we were able to demonstrate that both in the endometrial fluid and the endometrial biopsy there is an increase of these pathogens when we have poor reproductive outcomes which means no pregnancy or clinical miscarriage so we can see an increase of carnarella clepsila and streptococcus enterococcus uh, with no pregnancy clinical miscarriage, and you have these three, biochemical with heterococcus, and for the endometrial biopsy, you have these four that they are present when you have this poor outcome. And on the contrary, when you have good outcomes, those uh, pathogens, lactobacillus, is highly expressed, 
both in endometrial fluid and endometrial value sheet. So somehow it's consistent with the, with the previous uh, publication in the pilot study. So in conclusion, what I want to bring from this short presentation is that there is a pathogenic profile associated with reproductive failure, no pregnancy or clinical miscarriage, which is represented by these pathogens that uh, I mentioned here, mainly of huge relevance, Garnerella and Klebsiella. Uh, Lactobacillus is consistently enriched in endometrial microbiota in patients with live birth, so they are the good guys, but uh, keep in mind that good guys alone, they do not work. You need to remove the bad guys. So probiotics by themselves, they are not enough. Uh, it's not uh, what you sh what we should do is to remove the the, the Klebsiella, Garnerella, and uh, so you have to treat them with a specific, in this case, antibiotics, and then you can just replace the environment using probiotics. But uh, lactobacillus by itself is not going to solve the problem. Okay, and uh, the microbiota composition of endometrial fluid. Uh, it's not exactly the same as the biopsy because there are extracellular organisms that they are not living inside, they are living outside, but uh, altogether the association was completely consistent. So either in one or the other part, the association is consistent. And uh, that's why uh, we, we, we truly believe that the endometrial microbiota should be considered as a possible emerging cause of implantation failure or no pregnancy and personalization should be the way to understand this further and treat our patients with the specific factors. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Carlos.